And Jesus came to give us this wonderful model of uh, being human. That's what's so powerful about the incarnation. It's not just that, that God came down. God took on human form. And this wonderful second person of the Trinity, Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit, showed us, he really showed us what it means to be human. And it says in Hebrews that he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. And that means that everything that you go through and that somebody else is going through, he went through it. It doesn't say he was tempted in some ways. He was tempted in every way. We have trouble with that, don't we? I kind of grew up with this image of Jesus. You know, I know you've all seen it. It's kind of a blonde, very Gentile-looking picture that was in my Sunday school. And he's kind of gazing upward with a smile on his face. And he just didn't look like, I remember as a child thinking, he looked sweet, but he didn't look like he would understand anything I was going through. And then as I got older, I was convinced he didn't. You know. <laughs> so it's, it's just so wonderful to think that he went through everything we've gone through yet without sin. He had all the emotions, he had all the reactions, yet without sin. And so what we've done in our humanity is we've not really become like him as Christians. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. We can't do it ourselves, we know that. So we have to, number one, become like him and then represent him to the world in the way that he needs to be represented. And that's why we talk about the emotions. I don't think any one of you in this room, I think I can safely make this assumption, grew up in a fully functional family. <laughs> Did you? You know, they've said the holy family is the only fully functional family. And that could be true. I mean, the home I grew up in was very divided. My father had just tremendous issues with anger. He was very immature emotionally. My mother, on the other hand, was very, very balanced, very healthy. And thank God, you know, because I, I got some from her that was really healthy. But, but my father, just, uh, he, just, he was the 12th child in a very poor family. They were like sharecroppers. And he never had the models. He never had the healthy models. He had nice, good parents, but they just didn't understand. So what happens is, like one of the things I wrote at the top here, is what we're doing as prayer ministers and at CHM is we're trying to help people deal with their pain, that their physical pain, their emotional pain, their spiritual pain. And very few people that will come to you for ministry know how to deal with their pain. And the emotions are all wrapped around their pain, okay? We just have to think of that as they're just wedded. You can't separate pain from the emotions. And so this is what Jesus did constantly as he was walking through life. He was looking at people and trying to help them, you know, reach that pain level and surrender that pain to God and let God heal them. And so part of what, as a therapist, I've done in my life is try to identify people's emotions that are repressed or suppressed, whichever way, consciously or unconsciously, and help them begin to articulate what they're feeling. We can't separate our emotions from our humanity. And that's what many people have done. And religions, or certain religions that say, rise above your emotions, you know, reach nirvana, whatever. And that's not accurate either because that's denying what we're feeling and not dealing with it. And so I wanted to just kind of put that out there to begin with because the false self is the one that emerges during crisis, always, unless the true self is there. And the majority of people that come for prayer have a very active false self. And they're going to encounter you with your true self. And they're going to want to be like that. They're going to want to be like Jesus. They're going, to want to, they, they're going to see in you the person that they can become if you do your own work. You know, and have great joy. Some of the current work that's going on in the healing ministry that I'm connected with, uh, just some great groups out there in the Northeast and out West, they're talking about capacity. 
And one of the words they use is joy capacity. What is your joy capacity? You know, and joy is something. If, if we had another hour to talk, I would love to spend a whole hour on joy. Because Jesus says our, his joy should be in us and our joy will be complete. And I think what drew so many thousands to the early church on that day of Pentecost was their joy. And it's really hard to be drawn to Jesus if the Christian looks miserable. That's witnessing, isn't it? Or if they're very legalistic or very harsh. And we wonder why the church is dwindling. You know, it's not just there's not truth there. There's not health, healthy humans representing him. And that's the sad part. 